Hey guys, it's Kaylee. I'm back with another what sold from last week video. If you guys are new here, every week I like to come on and share what my sales were on eBay and Poshmark. I do this to kind of keep record of how the decisions I make in my business are going for me and how they ultimately affect my business. And so far, so good. I also dive into some specific items and what exactly sold for me. That way people know what to look for while they're at their thrift store that you might want to pick up while you're out and about to flip online for a profit. Overall, sales were pretty much where I would like them to be at every single week between six and 7,000. We just recently bumped up to 40 active listings a day, so probably won't see the effects of that labor until probably a few months from now, but excited to see that start to come into fruition. But for now, let's dive into last week's sales. All right, so last week was between February 19th through the 25th, and that's what all of these numbers are from. I sold on two platforms, eBay and Poshmark. In total, I sold 242 items and grossed sales of $6,206.07. Average sale price was $25.64. Estimated cost of goods was $968. And then estimated net, which is the gross sales, less cost of goods, fees, and any shipping costs involved, ended up being $3,468.09. Pretty happy with the gross sales number. I'd like to stick between six and 7,000 and work our way up to between seven and 8,000 every single week. But this is definitely where I feel like we should be falling right now based on what we are listing. On eBay, I sold a total of 108 items for gross sales of a little over $3,600. Uh, average sale price on eBay was $33.94. And then on Poshmark, I sold 134 items, gross sales of over $2,500 with an average sale price of $18.96. Now, if you're new here, this number might seem pretty low, but this has actually increased quite a bit over the last several weeks as we stopped clearancing a lot of our items. Um, so most sales on Poshmark are clearanced items, but we did have some pretty high price sales, which I'm definitely going to share with you. I'm going to start on eBay and do a little bit more of deep divey stuff into some brands. And then once we hit Poshmark, I pulled a lot of like the everyday kind of mall brand stuff that you can find pretty much all the time um, that we like really heavily relied on factor stacking for. So I'll share those with you once we hit Poshmark. Starting on eBay, this was probably one of our absolute best sales. We sold this Relwin Men's Winsett popover jacket. If you guys saw that thrift haul where I found like Relwin and all the Flint and Tinder, this was part of that haul. This is a brand you definitely want to look for. If you see it in pretty much anything, I would pick it up. Relwin, if you're only listening and not viewing the screen, is spelled R-E-L-W-E-N and it has a little red like bird logo. They make kind of like outdoorsy sportswear kind of stuff and their stuff retails for crazy amounts and it has a crazy high sell-through rate. Um, I could actually not find much about this particular jacket on eBay. I think we ended up having to go onto Google and kind of make up a price. So we landed on $175 and it ended up selling on an offer for $157.43. It did only take a couple of weeks to sell and we only paid $4.89 for it. Definitely a really solid pickup. Next two items are actually robes and I talk about the site Huckberry a lot, which is what this is. This site Huckberry has a lot of really good menswear brands uh, collectively on their site. So if you want to go onto that site and kind of study what brands they're selling on that site, most of them are very high sell through rate and very high ASP resell wise. Uh, one of them being Flint and Tender, which I know you guys have heard me mention before. Uh, the only reason I even looked at these robes was because I have actually sold this brand, Onsen, of towels before, and I immediately noticed this waffle texture. So this thrift store got apparently a mass donation from Huckberry, and they priced these items up. Each robe was $12.99, but again, such a high sell through for pretty much anything on that site, so I felt confident picking it up. This is just a waffle knit robe. Again, the brand is Onsen and I paid $12.99. We listed it for $64.92. It sold almost immediately after getting listed, probably within a week for our full asking price. So 13 into 65, not bad when it's a super quick flip. 
And this is a different kind of robe, but again, um, I believe still sold on Huckberry. This one I was actually new with tags. It is the brand Koyuchi. I'm not sure if I'm spelling that right, but it definitely also seemed to have a really good sell through rate and a high ASP. I was trying to see if I could figure out what it actually retailed for. I'm going to guess probably over $100. So we paid $12.99 for it. And same thing, we listed it for $64.92. It sold for full asking price within about a week of selling. Um, I still have a couple of these robes available, but I do expect them to sell over the next couple of weeks. Next up is a pretty exciting sale. I'd say this one's my absolute favorite. This is an Anna Sui, which is a designer, kind of hard to see here, collaboration with Target. And it turns out that this dress is the same dress that I th think her name is Elena Gilbert on Vampire Diaries. It's been a while since I've watched it, but the main character of Vampire Diaries wore, um, oh yeah, as seen on Elena Gilbert. And I just love finding these like mall brands or mall brand collaborations um, paired with like ASEAN celebrities. I just always look for stuff like this. So whenever I can learn a new one, I'm always excited. So this dress was made popular by that show and people were buying it and selling it for a lot. So I picked this up for $4.89. We listed it. I think I originally listed it a little too high. I think I put it closer to like $95. We've since dropped the price, so it has taken several months to sell, but it still ended up selling for $80.99, so 81 bucks. Really solid pickup there. I would definitely keep your eye out for, if you see anything kind of unique, maybe do a Google Lens search. That's how I figured out that this one um, was worth getting. Next up is another outdoors wear brand that you definitely want to pick up in pretty much everything. It is Ibex. And this is actually a women's vest. And again, anything in this brand does really good. And I like sharing stuff that you can pick up in pretty much any brand. We picked this up, up for $4.89. It listed it for $71.97. It has taken a few months to sell, but it ended up selling on an offer for $61.17. Great profits there. This is more of a winter item, but I wanted to share it anyways. This is the brand Garnet Hill. Garnet Hill is a brand that retails for quite a bit, but doesn't always have the best uh, sell-through rate anymore. But something I do look for in any brand where the sell-through rate has decreased is factors that will bring that sell-through rate back up. And one of those is 100% cashmere. We sold a lot of 100% cashmere things uh, this past week. This is, I believe, the only one I pulled to show you just because we are moving into spring and summer. But Definitely if you see something 100% cashmere paired with a brand that you know typically retails for a lot, you might want to check the sell through rate because it usually brings it back up to 100%. This one had slight amount of pilling throughout and we still ended up listing it for about $50. Paid $439, sold for $49.92 and it only took a few weeks to sell. Next up is a dress. This is the brand Sundance. I love Sundance. To be honest with you, I have a hard time leaving anything Sundance behind, but I will tell you that the larger sizes, size large and up, definitely have a better sell-through rate than something smaller. This is a size large women's midi dress, and it was a, a really pretty, like, typical to uh, Sundance kind of look. They make, like, in my opinion, like, bohemian hippie looking stuff. We paid $7.99 for this. We actually found two of them, two identical ones. One has already sold and we just sold this last one. So we picked up for $7.99, listed for $44.92 and it did sell for our full asking price. And both of those only took less than a month to sell. So pretty good return on investment and a quick flip. This one was a style-based sale. Um, I was so proud of Nikki when she got this. She has a really hard time with style-based stuff, but she's getting a lot better. She doesn't like to risk it on a lot of style-based stuff. Um, so I've been kind of honing in on the girls on picking up Y2K stuff because it's a super popular trend right now. So she came across this Express Women's Y2K Angora rabbit hair sweater. And she showed it to me and she's like, I don't know. Do you think I should get it? 
So we picked it up as kind of a risk it, let's see what happens. And to my surprise, and to hers as well, it sold very, very quickly. And I'm glad it did because we are moving out of colder weather. We paid $4.89 for it, listed it for $49.92. It ended up selling, like I said, within probably a week to two weeks of getting listed for an offer to watcher of $44.93. This is a brand I wanted to show. This is not a brand that I'd recommend picking up everything in, but we just recently hired a new sourcer and she likes to pick up more mature brands than we do. I still like picking up mature brands, but she seems to have a better understanding of it than I do. And so she's been kind of experimenting with a lot of these brands, stuff that I wouldn't normally pick up, she's picking up, and some of it is selling very quickly. So she's teaching me a little bit about some of these brands. So this is Gretchen Scott. This is a size small, which originally scared me that we weren't going to sell it very quickly because you guys know I like to stick to larger sizes. Uh, we picked it up for $4.89, listed it for $34.92, and it did sell within a couple weeks of getting listed. Again, I'm not saying pick up everything in this brand. I think the plaid is what really pulled this through, um, but maybe keep your eye out for this brand with some factor stacking. This is also a newer brand to me. It is Kjus or Kjus, K-J-U-S, and this seemed to be, if I'm if I'm remembering right, kind of like a golf wear brand. And this is a zip pullover men's. Um, one of our sourcers got this at the bins. We listed it for $39.92. And it sold on an offer to watcher for $33.93 within just a couple of weeks of getting it listed. I did a quick sell-through rate check on this brand and actually performs really, really well. So I would definitely keep your eye out for this brand in the men's department. Next up is another men's piece. This one I kind of had to make up a price for because I couldn't find much information about it on eBay at the time that I picked it up. It is a Polo Ralph Lauren men's classic fit size extra extra large um, Hawaiian t-shirt. And we decided to list this pretty high it was picked up for $3.99 by one of our sourcers and listed very high, which originally I was like, I don't know about that, but I did a comp and I understand why we did it. And to my surprise, it sold very, very quickly um, for our full asking price, $35.92. So a lot of people are passing up on the Polo Ralph Lauren, more modern looking t-shirts. But again, if you've got factor stacking involved, you can really ask for more. This one being it was Hawaiian print and a larger size, but just wanted to share some of the things that I think people might be passing on and myself included passing on some of these things that I'm showing you and learning a lot from one of our sourcers. Next up is a brand I do like picking up. It is XCVI. This is wearables by XCVI, which is also a great line. Um, I try to stick to their bottoms. They make um, these like oversized tiered sometimes drapey looking pants. You can see in this photo here kind of what I'm talking about. Um, this one took a little bit longer to sell just because there were a couple of flaws. We originally picked it up for $4.89, listed it too high with the flaws, and it ended up selling several months later for $30, which is still a pretty good return on investment for something that's flawed. But I would keep your eye out for wearables by XCVI and also just XCVI and these types of bottoms. And they're pretty easy to spot. This is another brand I just wanted to share that if you're new to reselling, you can pretty much pick up in anything. It is Arcteryx. This is a men's size extra large polo shirt. We picked it up for $4.89, sold it for an offer to watcher of $30.51. Uh, originally listed it for about $36 and it took a couple of months to sell. But Arcteryx, really solid brand in men's and women's. You can pretty much pick it up in anything. We are moving on to Poshmark, and like I mentioned before, I pulled a lot of sales of stuff that I think people are probably passing on, and just wanting to show that if certain factors are aligned in one garment, that you can actually pick up mall brands or lower tiered brands and still make really good profits. You just really have to focus on the factor stacking and making sure that you're doing your comps. So this first one is a pickup from essentially a reseller buyout. We paid $2 per piece. This is Cynthia Rowley 
women's linen 3x top and it had some sailboat prints thought it was really nice uh, we sold this on posh for 29 dollars. and during spring and summer i like picking up this brand in linen pieces when they are larger sizes they usually flip like 25 to 30. this was a y2k pickup this is juicy couture I found um, this cherry print sweatsuit and I picked it up in total for $9.28. It ended up selling very, very quickly because of that Y2K trend for $70. Really great flip there, but definitely something you want to be on the lookout for are these Juicy Couture sweat, um, not just the sets, but like the pants and or the jackets when they've got a big spell out. And something I think a lot of people are passing on are a lot of anthropology pieces. I will agree that like free people in anthropology have really gone downhill as far as resale wise. Um, sell through rate's not there. Usually ASP is not there. However, something you can focus on if you're someone who's just nixed these brands altogether is anything like midi to maxi length or jumpsuits and that section perform really well. Anything shorter than that probably want to skip. But it's a pretty solid pickup almost every time for me. Again, longer length items. So this one is an Anthropology Akimi Ken women's jumpsuit. Very multicolor. We paid $5.99 for this. It sold for $31. This is a J. Crew piece, and it's actually an older J. Crew piece, but it was 100% merino wool. It was size large and it was multicolor paisley print. For those reasons, one of our sourcer got this. Uh, got this one. We paid $4.89. It sold for $29. This is Eileen Fisher. I pretty much pick up everything Eileen Fisher. It just sells really, really well for me, um, especially in larger sizes, although I do still pick it up in smaller sizes as well. This is a size 1X women's lightweight tweed jacket. And anything like plus size in this brand brings a lot of money. We paid $4.99 for this. It sold for $51. Next up is a Michael by Michael Kors women's cardigan sweater. This is a size 2X. I almost never pick up Michael Kors or Michael by Michael Kors, but I'm starting to learn that the larger sizes in this brand actually have a really good comp, really good sell through rate, and sometimes you can ask for quite a bit of money. So I am keeping my eye out for Michael Kors plus size tops. Um, even sometimes extra large, if you do the correct comp, you can find that it does sell. We paid $4.89 for this. This is a chunky cable knit sweater, so a little bit more of a substantial piece. I think we listed it for around $40, and it sold on Poshmark for an offer of $34. Really great return on investment and something about a year ago I probably would have passed on. This is Athleta. This is also a plus size. This is a Salutation Jogger in a size 2X. Uh, we paid $4.89 for this. It sold for $40, um, the factor here being plus size and a newer style. This is J. Jill. I really love picking up J. Jill larger size dresses. Um, it's like a really solid flip for us every single year. This is the wherever collection. We do try to stick to more plus sizes. This one's just a size extra large, but it is the wherever collection, which is a more comfy collection and it was a floral print. So for those reasons, we picked this up. We paid $4.89 and it sold for $30. This one was a surprising sale. It is a White House Black Market silk top, and this is only a size medium. I have learned that silk tops in White House Black Market seem to sell pretty quickly, um, especially in like a size larger up, but this one was only a size medium, and it sold very quickly for $22, and we got this at the bins, so probably only cost a dollar because silk is really lightweight. This is Talbots. I like picking up Talbots plus size. This is a Talbots 2X uh, kind of nautical top. We picked it up for $5.24 and sold it for $30. Next up is a brand I think you guys saw me pick up at a thrift store during one of our like thrift with me's. I know nothing about this brand. We strictly picked it up because it was a bib denim overall dress and it had some cute embroidery. Um, I'm glad I trusted Mica on this one. We paid $4.89. It sold for $34 and it sold within about a month of getting it listed. 
This is a North Face men's jacket. We've pretty much said goodbye to most North Face pieces, but I still do a Google lens on the more substantial pieces and then do a comp to see if the sell-through rate's there. This one was called the Apex Elevation Jacket. It was a men's and it was a size extra, extra large, which really helped to increase the value. We paid $8.99 and it sold very quickly for $70. This is a pretty solid pickup for us all the time. It is men's Nike sweatpants, especially in larger sizes. So this was called the Men's Fleece Club Sportswear Sweatpant in a heathered gray, size large. Picked up for $4.99, sold for $28. This is another surprising sale. This is Jude Connolly. And we picked this up, essentially a buyout from another reseller for $2.00. Nice printed colors here and a shift dress. This sold for $36. Everlane, something I'm also really picking on, but we do look for larger sizes in nicer materials. In this case, this was Everlane size large merino wool alpaca blend sweater. We actually paid up for this. We paid $9.99 and sold it for $45. Here's another Nike piece I wanted to share because sometimes um, certain brawls, they're just really easy to uh, get listed and some of them can sell for quite a bit. This is a newer label Nike brawl. It was a size extra large, which helped to increase value. Um, we picked up for $4.99 and we listed it for $25, ended up selling it on an offer for $21. Same thing with that like a Kimikin jumpsuit. Free people in anthropology, if we find longer length stuff, we are picking it up. This one was also a size large and it happened to be new with tags. And we picked this up for $4.89. I think we originally listed it for $75 and I just accepted an offer of $60. This is Packed Organic. I absolutely love this brand. It flips super quickly for me, especially in dresses. This was a size extra large cotton wrap dress. Now this one is a shorter length, but these dresses in shorter lengths still do really well. We paid $4, it sold for 25. This one, I believe might've been another buyout. We paid $2, um, we got this listed. Um, I want to say within the last month, it is a St. John knit color block cardigan. This brand performs really well. This looks like it's a newer label St. John, um, but these knits in St. John perform really well specifically and the color block also helped to add value and it was also a size extra large. So it paid $2. It ended up selling for $50. This is a Chico's jacket. Uh, we've got this because it was new with tags and you can see it retails for a lot. This was just a size one, but it was a really nice reversible jacket and all of the style information was there. This does also look like it's perfect for spring. We paid $4.89, it sold for 50. Here's another Gretchen Scott piece. Again, a brand I wouldn't typically pick up, but one of our sorcerers is picking it up and it's actually performing pretty well. This was just a size medium, um, but it did have that like equestrian chain print to it, multicolor, hidden buttons, all great things um, to include. Picked it up for $2, sold it for $22. Another Talbot's piece, again, with the larger size. This is a 2X Petite. Peasley button-up cardigan. We picked it up for $4.89. It sold for $32. This is a newer label, We the Free Top, and we actually figured out the exact style by looking it up from the tag. This was called the Hidden Valley Flannel Top. This was a size large, paid $5.26 for it. It sold for $27. And lastly was a Duluth Trading Company women's quilted puffer vest. I come across this brand pretty often. I don't pick up everything, but definitely the more substantial pieces. This one was actually picked up by one of our sourcers. This is a duck down women's size extra large puffer vest. We picked it up for $6.99 and it sold for $46. So hopefully you can see some of the brands you come across pretty often if you do the correct factor stacking. You can actually make quite a bit off of just mall brands. You just got to make sure that you're picking up the ones with the good factors. All right, guys. So that's it for what sold last week. I hope that you guys enjoyed watching. If you're not already and you would like to be, don't forget to subscribe down below, hit the notification bell. If you do that, YouTube will notify you every single time I post these videos.
that is it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.